Nisha lost her mother at a young age, and her father quickly brought a stepmother into their home. From the first days in the house, the stepmother hated her stepdaughter, even though Nisha was only seven years old. Her father did not defend her, and he lived like a cat and dog with his new wife. Life was difficult for Nisha, especially when her stepmother's own children were born. The household was filled with shouting and arguing, but Nisha remained cheerful and lively. Her laughter was like the sound of a crystal bell, and her songs flowed freely. She knew so many songs and stories, it was impossible to count them all. She tried to drown out her bitter reality with her singing. As Nisha grew up, she blossomed like a field flower, and her youth was like a wildflower. Her father and stepmother only wanted her to get married as soon as possible, but not to Marta. One day, a man came to their house, not young or particularly handsome, but about 15 years older than Nisha. He had a black beard, a cap pulled over his eyes, and his eyes sparkled. No one had ever seen him before. I didn't know anything, and then this man came and said, I heard you have a hard-working and talented bride. I want to marry her. A good father would ask where you're from and what you're like, but he didn't bother to ask. He just wanted to get her married off quickly, believing in the superstition of marrying the first person who came along. Nisha married him without objection, just to escape from her home where she couldn't find any love, affection, or kind words. She wasn't scared to live far away from everything and everyone. She was full of hope that she would find a connection with her husband, Buryuk, and become a good wife in their new home among the ancient pines. She believed she would find happiness as a wife, and when her husband brought her home and shaved his hair and beard, Tanyusha immediately recognized him. She had seen this handsome man at the fair, where he was trying to buy honey but ended up not buying anything. As it turned out, she had caught his eye, but he was afraid to propose because he thought her parents wouldn't accept him. Later, he found out about her unfortunate fate, but for the sake of respectability, he decided to grow a beard to look older. His name was Ignat, and he lived far away in another village many versts away, according to the local time. And so, Tanyusha went with him. And anyway, far from any village, his parents' idol and inherited from him was a homestead with a house on the edge of the forest overlooking the wide expanse of the river. Hunting, fishing, everything was at hand, and there was no one around. Ignat brought Nusha home in the midst of winter. On one of the first days, she went out to the porch and was amazed at the beauty around her. The snow sparkled and the trees glistened. The river lay at the foot of the hill, frozen like in a fairy tale. Nisha was ecstatic and her joy burst out in song, echoing loudly over the area. Her husband embraced her and whispered in her ear that from now on, she wouldn't be called his wife but would be addressed as Anushka. The young couple fell in love with each other and their family turned out to be wonderful, after all the previous suffering that Anushka had endured. Her husband was hardworking, kind, and the household was strong. The nature around them was beautiful, with forests, rivers, and lakes. With their children, the young couple decided to delay, as they wanted a little more time to live with their love and enjoy the happiness that filled their home. And the songs flowed and laughter rang out for nine hours. So let's start by getting a kitten, Anna suggested to her husband. Because when you're gone for a long time, I get very sad, lonely, and scared. And although we have a watchdog in the yard, isn't a kitten just as good? Of course, a kitten is cute and warm and fluffy, replied her husband. All right, all right, we'll get you a kitten. I'll bring one back in a few days. A few days later, Ignat returned from the forest with a sly grin on his face and a bundle in his hand. Something was moving inside the bundle. He opened it up and instead of a kitten, there was a real baby lynx. Oh, what an adorable face. The nose is the color of a carrot, and such short little tail and ears with tufts, exclaimed his wife Anna. Where did you find it? asked Anna. 
I was walking through the forest, and it just fell from the sky right in front of me. Not from the sky, actually, but from the top branch of a tall pine tree. It was howling and crying for food, just like a hungry cat. But I didn't have anything with me, so I brought it home. After all, you wanted a kitten, explained Ignat. Anna scooped up the tiny, helpless creature. Poor little thing, all alone in the forest. We'll take care of you now, and hugging it close to her, she ran to pour milk into a saucer, first on steamed milk and then on more substantial nourishment. Anna's kitten grew into a graceful adult animal with his own personality. He was kind and affectionate, even to other people's cats he would shrink back and hiss. The young woman called him a beauty. He was truly her protector, and one day he proved it. Once at a fair, she accidentally ran into her stepmother, who was surprised to see her stepdaughter had blossomed and become more beautiful. She was dressed beautifully, her eyes were shining, and her stomach had grown. That meant she was expecting a baby with her husband. The stepmother began to ask questions, and Anna, a kind and pure soul, told her everything and even thanked her for helping her get married successfully. Tell father that he will become a grandfather by Easter, she said. The stepmother was so angry she almost burst. How lucky this little upstart was. When she returned home, she said nothing to her husband, but she couldn't stand to live in the same house as Anna. She cooked and ate, and she had an evil idea to poison her stepdaughter. And if not to poison her, then at least to deprive her of the child, because what happiness does she have? She took a decoction of some herbs and set off on her way. She came to her stepdaughter, pretending to bring a gift from her future grandchild's father, who was away on a long journey. Anushka set the table, treated the guest, and then put the samovar on and poured tea. Meanwhile, the stepmother was busy in the kitchen, putting herbs in the tea, but it didn't work out for her. The handsome tomcat, who was purring behind the stove, jumped out, knocked the poisoned tea out of the hostess's hand, and spilled boiling water all over her, scalding her to blisters. She screamed in pain, and the tomcat started to attack her, baring his teeth and hissing loudly. He pressed her towards the door, and she quickly ran out and dashed towards her home through the woods. That's how the tomcat saved two lives at once. When I was 200 kilometers away from my village, I saw an old man standing on the side of the road and asked me to stop. Then I turned off the music, pulled over and told him to get in the car. After he got into the car, he asked me where I was going. I told him the name of my village. He smiled and told me he was going to the village next to mine. We introduced ourselves to each other and started talking. At first he didn't say anything. He just listened to me and had to talk something. He smiled at me when I told him the story of me and my wife named Lucy. He said his wife's name was Lucy too. The man was silent for a while and told me he had lived a miserable life. He said with great interest that he and Lucy had been together since childhood. Their neighbors and spent most of their time together. They went to study together and played in the yard in front of their house at night. During the holidays, they went to the forest to pick mushrooms and fruits. They're always together. They're very harmonious and get along very well. It attracted people's attention. Some thought they would definitely get married and move on with their lives. After Lucy and Michael grew up, they became a young couple. They cared a lot about their love and relationship. Finally they started trying to get married. However, Michael had to join the army as soon as possible and it's his obligation. He had to leave his hometown. He promised Lucy that he would come back and marry her. Michael kept in touch with Lucy in the military. He often sent her letters and presents. His wife kept asking how he was doing. The distance between them is too far. Michael's barracks is about 1,500,000 kilometers from the village. A year later, he didn't hear from Lucy and their connection ended entirely. 
She's no longer in contact with Michael but Michael continued to message her. He desperately wanted to connect with her but failed. He wondered why this young woman disappeared in this way. He tried to contact his relatives and get news about her. After several months, Michael waited for Lucy until Lucy's mother sent him a letter. She told Michael that Lucy married Valerie, Michael's friend. Michael was shocked after reading this letter. He didn't expect his girlfriend to have an affair with his friend. After being shocked, Michael began to cry over what had happened to him. From then on, he no longer trusted anyone. He no longer believed in love and no longer married. He would live alone because he has lost faith in everyone. When Michael finished his military service, he didn't return to the village where he grew up because he no longer wanted to meet his relatives. He moved to a village in the north and built a hut in a small village. He had a big beard and long hair so his face was almost covered. He started a new life. Luckily, Michael worked in a railway company for a short time and earned 10 years' salary. He lived alone there and tried to avoid contact with people because he didn't cut his beard and hair. He had nowhere to go. His appearance led some to think he was mentally ill. Then he moved to another village 20 kilometers away. He bought a small house in that village and lived there. Michael spent most of his time wandering in the woods and at the same time, he was looking for something. While wandering in the forest, he met a ranger. They talked for a while and Michael told him that he was looking for a job. That guy offered him a job as a ranger because one of his colleagues retired in those days. Eventually Michael found a job. He spent most of his time in the woods. It's what he's been looking for for years. Michael's life is getting better as he meets animals in the wild and he has a lot of fun with them. He often goes to the house his parents left him. He grew up there, but he didn't want to meet anyone, especially Lucy. She betrayed him, as well as Valerie. That's why he always goes to the village early in the morning. After returning home, Michael hears that Valerie lives with Lucy and that they have a son. But their relationship is strained. He doesn't care about that because he just wants to take care of animals in the forest, sit with them and help them when they need it. It's the only thing that makes him feel like he's a positive and useful person in this world. Michael found dead animals in the forest and he decided to find the perpetrators. He asked some hunters in the village and was told that a hunter from a neighboring village mercilessly killed all the animals he found. He threatened that he would shoot anyone who stood in his way. Michael continued to investigate. He discovered that this evil hunter was Valerie, his former friend. Valerie took away his lover. Michael was confused because he didn't want to be recognized by Valerie. He wants his brutality to end. One day, Michael heard gunshots in the forest. When he got there, he found Valerie with a gun on his back and quickly left. Michael realized that the evil man killed another animal, so he continued his search. Michael sighed when he found them. He realized that if he didn't help these little animals, they would die. He buried their mother, took them in his arms and took them to his house to take care of them. The man sat with three long-legged animals and fed them. He kept touching them and felt that he was their mother. They need him. He decided not to abandon them until they could take care of themselves. Three animals stayed at Michael's house for two months. Michael took care of them and provided them with everything they need, which made them attached to him and thought of them as domestic animals. Three cats are attached to Michael. They played with Michael. Three bobcats had grown up. They could run and jump. He took them to the forest put them there and hoped they would live a good life. One year later, a letter from the head of the forest office was sent to Michael. They asked Michael to guard the forest and find the killer. Michael was overwhelmed because he would have to meet Valerie who killed those animals. One day, Valerie came out of the woods as usual. He filled the basket with fruits and mushrooms. On his way back, 
a huge shadow blocked his way. When he tried to shoot that animal, it jumped at him. So he shot. Valerie threw the basket on the ground and escaped, but he found two shadows waiting for him here. They attacked him. When Michael came to the forest as usual, he found Valerie lying on the ground. He approached and called an ambulance. Michael prayed for him and left him on the ground. He bled profusely. Michael tried to pick him up, took him out of the forest, and put him on the road. But Valerie died on the way. Michael discovered that Lucy's mother and Valerie had been misleading him. Lucy's mother sent him a letter and told him that Lucy had married another man. Actually she lied to him. She sent another letter to Michael. She told her daughter that Michael had met another young woman and married her. After crying for many days, Lucy decided not to send Michael any more letters. In the end, Lucy married Valerie because Valerie wanted to marry her after Michael went to join the army. Even so, it never occurred to Michael to marry Lucy after the deaths of Valerie and her mother. He decided to move on with his life, serving wild animals, protecting them and helping them. Now Michael is old. After he finished speaking, I looked at him with respectful eyes. I want to give him a hug. I asked him about Lucy. He told me that she lives in the village where I live and that he's teaching her son how to love and respect wild animals. If you like this story, please like and subscribe to the channel. There's still a lot of interesting things ahead. All the best.